What's up everybody? Blue Gabe. That's my 11 year old Jake for those of y'all that don't know and that's my 1860 Pro Drive duck boat that I use it pretty much only for fishing and spear fishing and fish gigging everything but duck hunting because I'm not a super big duck hunting fan. Now we're here in Vero Beach, Florida at Lake Garcia and I'm walking over real quick to read the rules and regulations. And do they even have them though? Hmm. Why don't I see the rules? No rules. No rules. Hmm. That's actually no big deal at all because fishrulesapp.com, who's owned by my brother and his good friend, Mr. Rick Blaylock, has all the rules and regulations for freshwater and saltwater from Florida all the way up the East Coast, all around Texas. So all I gotta do is grab my phone and look there. I thought though, for some reason, it used to be there, but it's not. We're only gonna keep one good bass for dinner because Jake loves to eat fresh fish and so does Kelly and Luke. Let's go ahead and show them a glimpse of your last big bass you caught. How big do you think it was? 12 and a half pounds. Right. You guys, watch this little clip. Now it was him and I fishing in Lake Kenansville. He was throwing his air spook on a little tiny ultralight rod and he catches this mega bass that was as big as anything I've ever seen. We didn't have a scale though. He's calling it 12 and a half pounds. So yeah. go ahead and pick that giant thing up. He's <laughs> so heavy though. Pick it up, turn it sideways. Look at that thing. <laughs> on the Zara Spook. He just caught that monster fish on this little summit rod made for, I think, crappie and little tiny bass. That is my favorite rod right there. My favorite, favorite rod. Little does he know that this lake right here is where I hooked and almost landed the biggest bass I've ever had on. I would safely say she was 12 pounds, but I didn't weigh her. We didn't weigh his fish, so we really don't know. But hey, we're back from Mexico. We're back from the Keys. Summer vacation is officially over. The kids go back to school Monday. So we're just getting back to life. And we're gonna do so right here in Lake Garcia. So normally, Jake always helps me unload the boats. I've taught him how to drive my 300 Suzuki that's on my bay boat and pretty much all outboard boats, but I haven't taught him how to drive this Pro Drive yet. So when I launch it, I use my power poles. Y'all watch this. Now I can pull up here and park and that boat's not going anywhere. One thing you never want to forget when you're going on the boat in Florida, frog togs. Always take them everywhere I go. They are, in my opinion, the best rain jacket that's ever been made. And they're actually half the price of some of your big leading competitors like Hawk and uh, AFCO. Some of those suits are so ridiculously expensive, it's insane. It's actually blowing about 10 miles an hour and slightly raining. This is perfect weather for South Florida giant bass. Jake, have you ever seen an alligator here on this lake? I have seen one over there. You what? There's thousands of them. There's thousands of them? Everywhere. Son, you didn't get the rain jackets. You didn't help me get the drone. Did you just, just get on the boat and I've go fishing? I've been trying to fish. I've been fishing right here. Oh. You never know. I could hook a... Here, take that drone. A new... A new what? Uh, uh, a new record bass. A new peanut butter bass. New PB. P what is up with these new age kids saying PB? It's P personal bass, but I thought it was peanut butter. <laughs> my, fr my friend in the Keys was like, okay, this is my PB coot. I'm like, caught a peanut butter coot. <laughs> He caught a peanut butter cuda. Oh, it's so good to be home, you guys. When we were in Mexico, I thought I'd never get back. That trip really mentally wore me out, and I am glad to be home. Traveling to Mexico because of COVID? What a nightmare. Look at that gator right there coming out that away. Look at him, Jake.
you ready for a butt whooping? Now, y'all constantly hear me talk about power poles. Does it get any easier than that? Absolutely not. Now let's get to rigging up some baits. It's crazy windy. I didn't think it was going to be this windy. So the audio is probably not going to be that great. But we're about to have fun over the next couple hours. And this video is just getting started. All right, so for a lot of you, you already know what my boat has on it, what it is. But for those of y'all that don't, this is my Pro Drive boat. They're built in America, 100% built in Louisiana. A good friend of mine, KP, is the big boss there and was such an amazing person to deal with when it came to building the boat of my dreams, which is what I'm in now. I have a Diamondback Airboat, a 224 Blackjack Bay Boat, and this boat, by far, this is my favorite of the three. Me and my kids, or me and Kelly, can do anything we want out of this boat, and we can do it in a hurry and not spend much money at all on fuel. So right here, this handle used to come up right here and come out, and that was for holding on to when you were driving. I had them bring it up and put an outrigger light so I can hook my camera right here and film for you guys and not need a cameraman. Just like so, just that easy. Big fish, big fish. Hey, that's like your oh, it's a pickerel, I think. No, it's a bass. Anytime you're in Florida like this, in these conditions, and you can find where wind is blowing through a certain area, like those lily pads over there, you know there's going to be fish there. And that was like your second cast. My that second cast, yep. Bad. Dang, I need some pliers. Look how he choked, he choked that Zara spook. Thought he was much bigger than that though. First fish of the day. Now one thing about kids, and I'm sure I was the same way when my dad was taking me, is when you get something in your mind that you want to use like they do, they always go to it. If I'm fishing in Florida, I'm throwing a Zara Spook 90% of the time. That fish ate like he was so big. Fish number two. That spook is Jake, you don't want me to run away. You don't want me to run away with this tournament with a spook. You better get one on. I'm putting it on my summit. The one thing I've always wondered about this color, I don't know what the yellow and the pink and the clear bottom has to do with fish wanting to eat it but they love it all right y'all this is the summit rod this is what i caught my big 12 pound bass on with the uh i think it the rush reel with some beyond braid on it I'm about to catch another big bass you gonna show me how it's done yeah there's no denying that top water by far is my favorite style of fishing it doesn't always work especially in, especially in florida in the middle of the day but y'all just saw me catch that fish, talking to you guys, not even looking. And it's so cool to watch these bass just hit it. Hit it so hard. I think we're keeping this one for dinner. Why bass though? Like... Because Kelly loves bass. You like bass. Look at that. One for dinner. That's all we're keeping. One tip I will give you when you're throwing. There we go. You got one? This is a big one too. What? What big one? So in a minute I'm going to show you what the water looks like. There's crazy amounts of hydrilla, which a lot of people wouldn't dare throw a top water because this second hook, if it's not in the fish's mouth, will grab that hydrilla and pull the lure right out of the fish's mouth. That fish just freaked out in the cooler, and that's what just happened to Jake. 
if you are going to throw in thick hydrilla like this that's just below the water you better have your drag crank down tight and when it hits you better reel as fast as you can to get that fish above the grass now on all my reels i have 30 to 40 pound beyond braid which is a braided line and then i have a leader this is actually 25 pound fluorocarbon which is a little bit heavier than i wanted but i forgot and put my 20 in my other boat Typically when you're throwing top water, fluorocarbon is not the answer because fluorocarbon actually sinks. You would rather use monofilament that floats, but because all I have is fluoro, I used a real short one, only a foot and a half. Look at all the gnats <laughs> all over the trolling motor. Yeah. Those are what we call hydrilla gnats. So if you see what I mean here, you see all the vegetation that's just below the water. It's only under the water about that deep which is deep enough for me to allow my baits to come across it without hooking it. But as soon as you hook a fish, it gets in there and it's really hard to get out. Now, when I decided to pull up here and fish, look at that big gar, Jake. That big gar. Oh, dang. Grab him. Didn't find mine. When I decided to fish here, I knew closer to the lily pads, there was not near as much hydrilla. And I knew that the fish would be stacked up right there and right there because that's how the wind's blowing through. Being successful is all about making the right decisions and don't think I always make the right ones because I make a lot of wrong ones too. Get his head up out of the water. mimicked what we've already been doing worked flawlessly it's so funny because jake's now 11 years old and he, he used to hate bass fishing yeah i did bring him out here a couple times and let him catch some and now he's addicted to it that's all we can do is bass fish i know yeah keep that rod tip up son <laughs> keep that rod tip real son real cute. i'm trying to get the net <laughs> Get him over here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bucket mouth, he said. Look at that. Nice two and a half, three pounder. Hold on. Let's just go show him to the camera. I netted him. Look at that. Nice little South Florida bucket mouth. Hey. Hold him up. Uh, what do you think about that? It's my third biggest. Because my second biggest also caught in Keenansville after that big 12-pounder. What do you say, about five pounds? No, a fish is about three. Turn him loose. Alrighty. Come into the back. You think you're just a, a rolling Martin now, don't you? Uh -huh. See, See ya, ya, buddy. That made my day. Oh! Oh, that fish hit hard. What are you trying to say? My fish is small? No, I thought he was a lot bigger than he is. You guys, leave a comment below if your kids smack talk when you're fishing. I didn't say he was small, I just thought he was bigger. Uh-huh. If he was yours, he'd be five pounds. <laughs> Look at that, you guys. We're having the time of our life. Leave a comment below if you want to see us do more bass fishing videos. I can actually get a cameraman to where you can really see what we're doing. I don't know if y'all like it or not because I don't do very many of them. Look at that, boys and girls. I ain't never seen a pike before. A South Florida pickerel. Look at that. I think we're going to turn him loose. Yeah. Too cool of a fish not to. He ate the old bomber long, eh? Alright, y'all are hooked up to a big one. I think this might be the biggest of the day right here. But look how he's hooked. Look, you think he was hungry? Yeah. <laughs> you better be careful when doing this, cause. Oh, dad, this. He didn't. He, he didn't even 
have a hook in him. This is the macro video all over again. <laughs> oh, what? He did it? No, it was just, he was choked on it. Oh. Look at that. Beautiful, large mouth. He's a fatty, too. Daddy, daddy. You got a big one? I got the 10 pound in oh, Let me underneath you. Oh, we got rods in the way. I need the net. Need the net. Oh, Bring him here. Big old bucket. Ow! Oh, sir. <laughs> what? Here, hold your fish. Let me get mine up here and turn him loose. We can look at your big old big and back to back cast. Like as soon as I was about to twitch it, it just just pew, huh? Bro, this might be an eleven pounder. Eleven pounder. He's so fast. Looks like he just made a move. All right, bring him up here. Oh. Look at this big old big and Jake just busted up on. Four pounds. He wasn't coming off, I know that. Yeah. Yeah, I thought he was coming off. Look at that. Hold him tight. Don't turn him loose, son. Let me get the GoPro down. Son. Big old bucket mouth. Big old biggin. Back to back cast right down this little lane. There's some current coming through right here. We've actually we just caught probably ten right there, just goofing off. Caught about five right here. Just made back to back cast right there and Boom. This 10 pounder over there though, not this fish, but another one, like kept eating it and kept getting it in his mouth, but he wouldn't eat it. But look at that. Sadly, we lost him. But alrighty, y'all, we're releasing the beast. The beast, son. <laughs> All right, throw down there real quick and make another cast. Quick. Let's do this. There was a big alligator sitting there. Jake! Oh! I just broke my line on a giant! Oh, he's got one too! Oh my god! Jake, Jake, get it, get it, Jake! I just broke off a giant and lost my spook! You lost your spook! Yes, I lost it! Take your time! You oh my the gosh, the fury of all furies! Oh no! Come on, quick, throw it, clean your hook off and throw it back out there, oh, quick. On. Come on, let's get him. We're freaking out right now. Dude, that fish I broke my line on was huge. This is by far the most successful. There he is, there he is. I got him. Keep your, oh my goodness. I haven't lost a lure in months, and I just lose one in the best fury of my life. Uh, I thought he was a lot bigger, but... Here, get him off. You guys, tell me that that's not a heartbreaker, losing my lure right in the middle of this. I'd be depressed if that happened. I am depressed. I'm heartbroken. Oh. <laughs> this is insane. You got him? Yeah, and it's a big one too. Oh, not really good, but it's a bass. Dude, I feel so bad for that right now. I'm about to be back in the game, son. Ready to spawn too because it's coming that time. Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. You guys, I hollered like a complete girl. girl. Like that devastated me losing that. 
That was my last fook of that color. Jake hijacked the other one. What do you expect? Oh my goodness. Normally I would end it right now, but I think we can catch one more. Those birds you hear in the background are gala news. They're laughing at me right now for losing my spook. How many fish have we caught? 50? 500 probably. I guarantee you we've caught 50 fish, y'all. A lot of Throw it fish. out there in the wide open, right out there. Usually we'd go fishing and catch four or five, but we've been putting these work on them. Got him. Get him. That's a good one. Oh, it is a good one too, boy. Oh. Hey, you want the net? Oh, he's got me in the weeds. No, get that fish. Don't lose him. another spook. I told y'all we'd catch one more. Oh. Come on, baby. Come on. Uh-oh, hit my remote. Don't shake your head. If he shakes his head, the macro video all over again. Oh, I'd have a hook right in my finger. You guys, right there, we're ending it right now, right here. Lake Garcia, South Florida. They're not the biggest bass, but I guarantee you they're the most fun you will ever have in your life fishing. Get a boat, go from shore, take your kids, take your buddies, take your mom, take your wife. Just go fishing. We will see y'all back at my house because my six-year-old Luke said he had something to tell y'all. I don't know what it is, but he said I couldn't end this video without him talking to you. Plus, we still need to cook that one bass that we kept from earlier. We'll see y'all back in Stewart, Florida at my house. What about that, y'all? Look at these big old pipes. I just got home from Okeechobee. Obviously, it's the next day. I had to go pick up the new culvert pipe for our new driveway. For those of y'all that follow along very closely, y'all check out my new, it's actually like a football field, but it's a driveway. So this used to be rock right where we're at now. For some reason, the old owners, they only had concrete coming up to this big pad right here. So I had rock here, I hated it. Over here, we had bushes. You can actually see some of this in my last two videos. I tore it out. That's what I used to do for a living is run bobcats and we poured 52 yards of concrete all the way to right here because we had to get a permit for the culvert, which we had to get a permit for the driveway too, but we had to get a separate one for the culvert and I'm gonna make it a lot wider. So tomorrow we're gonna start here, tear the rest of the concrete out, set the new culvert, which will be three foot wider will give me more room to back up in there and the rest will be history. We need to go cook this bass though because I'm hungry. I like how you were just casually carrying a bass explaining everything. Well, <laughs> if you would have known me back in the day when I used to run bobcats for a living, we were young. I started when I was 19, I think. My dad made me learn on a company called Devasa, which was the largest home building company in the world at its time. We shut the door on 12 new houses every single day. Every day, 12 new houses were done. And my job when I first started was to just take the bobcat around the house, clean up construction debris, just things that needed to go in the dumpster. Well, once I learned how to run it, my dad hired me because he did all of the dirt work that had to do with the house, the footers, the house slabs, everything, everything, plumbing roughs, everything. So once dad hired me, that was back in like the prime, early 2000s. We would hog hunt or deer hunt all night long. I would then go to the job site some nights and sleep on the job because if we were late, we would get fired. If we were on time, we wouldn't. So we would sleep on the job tour when the guys got there that morning at daylight, we were there. We might be tired, but they would wake us up and we would work. So toting a bass around, I, this is how I would run bobcats. and. Anybody watching that used to be on the job site back in the day, they would always say, how do you run a bobcat barefooted? Well, I trained myself and we would show up with deer in the back of the truck, hogs, fish. You guys, that was, then were the days. We used to work. I mean, we, we partied and played hard, but we worked hard. We always had a lot of money. We always thrived to do more. Whatever we could do to make more money to where we could play harder is what we did fish were part of that. Y'all, we are fixing to throw down in the kitchen with just one bass. Now first we're going to start with garlic bread. 
because one of the things that we grew up on at my house was garlic bread. Now, we never used this like French style bread. My mom would just make it with plain old white bread and it was so good and now my kids love it too. Luke, come here. You told me that you wanted to tell your fans something. What was it? Huh? Crickets? Cricket what? <laughs> what here. did you want to tell everybody? Come here. Are you for once in your life speechless? That can't even be possible. That's physically Dad, what impossible. what are you talking about? You're the one who told me yeah. yesterday when we left that you had something that you, you wanted to say. Something to tell everyone that Look at the turkey fans though, you guys. Kelly has mounted more turkey fans this year. Like I used to do one or two a year for a decoy. Now we've got like 17 of them going on the wall. So I didn't talk too much about how to throw top water, especially as they're spook in this video, just because we were out there having fun and you could actually watch while I'm throwing it, how we do it. But so Jake, it's just like almost every kid, and including myself when we were growing up, he wanted to try to throw too many things at one time. So the last couple trips, I've made him stick with one rod and one lure, and he's chosen that Zara Spook. And obviously it works because he's caught his two or three biggest bass ever in the last two consecutive trips. So if I could give you any advice when fishing, if you have confidence in something, keep doing it. If you don't, don't get overwhelmed, you know, by watching TV or fishing shows because they'll show you so many different lures. Just find one that you can catch something on and keep throwing it until you figured you perfected it. And that Zara Spook is a very, very, very good bait to do that with here in Florida. Especially when the current is like when it's like a little, little forecast, when it's a little rainy and the wind's blowing, just kind of get it, but you want to jerk it like harder. So it makes that like louder sound and they're like really aggressive and they'll just eat that thing up. They will eat it up, y'all. Whenever you can throw a spook or a jerk bait, if it's deep enough, use them. Cause those are like the best baits ever. Now before when I would take Jake, he would try to throw everything in the boat. And I do the same thing as well but I'm a little bit more experienced. So I know, you know, if it gets sunny, we need to start flipping. If it's windy and overcast, we need to throw a spook or a spinner bait. If it's just normal conditions, I like to throw a worm. But Jake has really showed out the last two trips in a row. He's caught by far the biggest fish of the day. I used to talk about eating bass and I would say, you know, not everybody does it and some people are against it. I don't even care about that anymore. If you're against eating largemouth bass, you got some issues because it's really, really good, and you're definitely not hurting the population by eating one or two. There's, there's no. Look at that, just beautiful. So we're gonna start out with a little bit of this. One of our fans sent us, and this stuff is actually really good. Don't need a bunch because we're only cooking a little bit of fish. A little bit of regular flour, about that much. Blend it up. Take some. Garlic salt. You can make such a good meal with fish and grits. It's super cheap, especially if you catch the fish yourself. Now you see that that was just one two pound bass. And that's gonna be enough for all of us to eat for lunch. Shake it around. Jake, I just sent him out to get the rod that he was using yesterday, because I wanna show you guys what one little setup can do if you use it right. My grease is smoking hot too, by the way. When you guys watch us fish, for the most part, we're either using old salties or some of my bigger snapper setups. This little setup right here that Jake just walked in with, is such a tiny little rod. It's a six eight, a quarter to three quarter ounce, six to 12 pound test rod with 20 pound Beyond Braid, a 25 pound fluorocarbon leader and a Zara Spook. And Jake has already caught, which could have been a 12 pound bass. He caught all those big bass yesterday and several huge bass on that same setup the last trip we went on. The first bass 
ever caught on this. I caught a big peacock and a big largemouth over at Uncle Robert's ranch. Mm. I just grabbed this rod. I, I didn't think it'd be too good, but this rod is probably my favorite spin rod. And it's ever. made by favorite as well. So the same company that makes Old Salties, they make tons of bait casters. And I don't ever talk about it because I don't do very many freshwater bass style, you know, fishing videos. But favorite makes all kinds of rods and reels. And if you use my promo code blue Gabe, you can save 20% off your entire order. I don't care if you spend $20,000, you can save 20% off of that order. And they also make all my shirts that you see me wear in my videos with the hoodies. You can get them there as well. This fish is going to be so good. Did you hear Luke? Luke, how do you smell it? You're way over there. It's just so good that I can smell all the way from here. <laughs> That's because your dad's a good cook, Lukey Dookie. This right here, when we were growing up, went on everything we ate. That's all you need to make the best garlic bread you'll ever have, right there. I needed that one, I could have. Fish is almost done. We will see y'all at the table. Thank you, dear God, for this day. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you for letting us have a wonderful day of bass fishing, and thank you for letting us be able to catch all those bass. And thank you for this wonderful food we're about to eat today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Now, before all you keypad warriors attack me, <laughs> Kelly Young's going to eat. So, heaven forbid in a video I don't... Here, like... If I don't take something and give it to you, babe, <laughs> my fans just act like I starve you. I already ate, but I'll try it. Just try it, babe, so nobody thinks that you're starving. Is it good? Yeah. Actually, it takes better. Uh, than I don't know if I'll ever mentally get over the fact that I didn't give you some spider crab in that video because of all the comments that I got. They said that I was very rude. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How many videos did we film that day? I don't even bunch, remember. Like three. All right, on to the next ones. Come on, Lukey Duke, how do you like it? Good. We'll try a big old bite and let's see. Would you recommend eating largemouth bass? Just a thumbs up or a thumbs down? I don't even know what the largemouth bass tastes like. You're eating it, silly. Eating it. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. All right, Jake, come on with it. We gotta put the grits on it. Grandma taught you that, didn't she? Mm. Who yeah. makes better grits, me or Grandma Betty? You. Oh, you better not say that too out loud because Grandma watches our videos. Grandma, you make better grits. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, what are we gonna do with all these turkey pans? I uh, well, I have four hanging up in the kid room right now. These, I don't why, know. Why is all the rods over there on the couch? Why does the house just look like a bomb went off? Because I am taking part in organizing Blue Gabe's house. <laughs> it's our house, babe. Our house, not yeah, but Blue Gabe's. Is, but this is destruction from you before I got here. No, actually, because see, <laughs> now they're going to think what she's really doing is organizing the guest bedroom, which is now Lukey's bedroom, which I had organized. She didn't like the way I had it organized. You can sit back there and talk smack all you want. It was organized I wish, chaos. I wish I, I should have filmed it before I took everything out of the room. Anyhow, we have a lot of stuff. As you can imagine, we have everything from every activity that we do. We're now putting them in the game room because Jake will be in the sixth grade this year. So we separated them, give them their own room so they can have their own space. And they can clean their own room. If you haven't ever had grits before, I challenge you to make them like what we do. Salt, butter, plain old grit. That, oh God, it's so good. But I bet if you handed someone this piece Um, of babe. What? Sorry to interrupt you. The garlic bread? Oh boy, the garlic bread. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> What'd you say, dude? So, uh, if you handed someone this piece of fish and you said to eat it and they ate it, they I, they probably would never guess it's large enough for that. I don't think so either. It's like blue. It's really good. Did I'm gonna have... tell you something. All right. What? The question is, if if you gave a shark fried large mouth, would you like it or not? Um, I think he would prefer it raw, like sashimi. What bass? Yeah. 
You would vote. No, a shark. Oh, a shark. Yeah, this is Luke's conversation. Guess what tomorrow is, y'all? Opening okay. day of lobster season. Da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. We were in the Mexico for many season. Everybody got to get a jump on us, but tomorrow morning, Kelly and I and one of my brother's friends, Nick, are going out. And Kelly's mom, your mom coming? Mm -hmm. Kelly's mom, we're going lobstering for opening day 2021. No, open day. Yeah, it is open day. I yes. don't know what year it is. I know it's 2021, <laughs> but I think it's whatever. Y'all get the point. We're going lobster and we'll see y'all in the next one.